All right, well, here's a car that is probably not fuel injected. <laughs> no. I'm guessing. So, yeah, not, not it's close. It's a 94 Corvette. It looks like it's uh, kind of right out of the movie Cars. Uh, really cool. Uh, ah, 30s, early 40s? What do we got Yeah, it's a, it's a 39 Ford Standard Coupe, or Businessman's Coupe was a name they also used for it. It was the cheapest 39 Coupe you could buy. Uh -huh. And Ford back in those days, a lot of people think it's a 38. Some of the older guys. Now, you know, to you and I, we wouldn't, you know, it's like you say, what is it? Because what Ford did is they take the, the deluxe model of the previous year and sell it as the cheap model the next year. Uh -huh. They got extra money out of their tooling, so to speak. So right. a 38 Deluxe looked very much like a 39 standard. Ford at the time must have had, you know, a really substantial share of the market back then. The reason why 39 was significant was it was a first year of hydraulic brakes, okay? Mm -hmm. And if you've ever driven a car with mechanical brakes, uh, you understand hydraulic brakes were a beautiful thing, sure. all right? I mean, yeah, we're not talking power, we're just talking hydraulic. Hydraulic, hydraulic. right, right, yeah. exactly. Mechanical was a cable. Right. And, yeah, it's like you a know, clutch. I, like I tell people, with mechanical brakes, you'd call ahead and make an appointment to stop and hope that you made the appointment, you know? Sure. I mean, it, it, stopping is, is not good in a mechanical brake car. So that's why the hydraulic brakes, why the moonshiners, adopted Ford of course had the V8 right. and you know that's the car that Bonnie and Clyde drove because of the big V8 and all that so with the V8 now with hydraulic brakes the 39 standard coupe the cheap one was the car of choice for moonshiners in the south that's what it looked like to me right and that's how NASCAR got their start sure okay they moonshiners would brag about whose car was faster they'd go out to a dirt uh, circle track and some guys farm and they'd race and, right. and that was stock car racing so this car represents it's a replica because the real car doesn't exist there's one other replica of this car I know of that's in uh, South Carolina owned by JB Day mm -hmm. uh, who helped me with photographs to do this one great old guy ran actually in the day uh, and my dad my uncle sponsored the guy he's, he's in his 80s uh, this car represents the first NASCAR champion in 1948, right after the war. Right. And NASCAR was started in or, or formed in December of 47. So, so basically, the first NASCAR championship car was essentially a 10-year-old car. That's right. Because this was a 38 that got pushed over into 39. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Right. Won it in 30 in 48. Imagine today yeah. winning in an 03 Impala or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Insane, right? This car is not a cream puff, okay? It's it's meant to represent what it was. Now, you know, the guys up at H&H &H Flatheads, they, uh, I've thought about having them put a flathead in, but you know, uh, Adam and Matt, what the guys do that put flatheads in, mm -hmm. they claim their cars are more stock. Typically, they put a Chevy S10 transmission in, which is a five-speed. Right. Because if we had a flathead in here, and I own about, well, probably four or five flathead-powered cars, if we had a flathead in here, we would, in order to stay up with the freeway speeds, we'd be leaning on that motor yeah. big time. Right. So with the five-speed transmission, you're not going to kill the motor, and you can go free, freeway speeds. Right. This interior and the 40 interior look like a bigger uh separation than one year yeah i mean this is very old school the 40s very sort of art deco how how stock would these cars have been in 1948 when they won the championship pretty stock i mean uh smoky eunuch said that uh the name stock car was always a good natured joke right you know, at best uh, the guy who built this car red vote had a 24-hour garage in atlanta georgia my Uncle Zeke dated his sister. Uh, we sold him a lot of product. Red's claim to fame was he made all the uh, hot rod motors for the moonshiners. Mm -hmm. 
and he also made the hot rod motors for the revenue agents. Uh -huh. Somebody asked him one time, well, who gets the faster motor? And his response was, well, the moonshiners pay in cash and the revenue agents, they're 30 days, so you figure it out. Wow. So, <laughs> so he made it for the guys that were doing yeah. it and the guys who were chasing the guys. Playing were doing both it. sides, right. Doing yeah. it, wow. That's, like, that's how you make the money. You gotta that, play both sides. You do. <laughs> and the stock car, what they would do, they tighten down the suspension. Mm -hmm. uh, they, for the, if you're hauling moonshine, they put on it what they call a liquor spring. Well, what the liquor spring would do is jack the rear end back up when you got all the weight in. Is that like add a leaf or something? Like, no, it's like, a, a like blocking spring? it up. It's like jacking it up. Uh-huh. So you could, it wasn't always that way. It, you would, when you get the load in, you'd jack the car back up. So it wouldn't look like you were hauling the load, thus it wouldn't, you, you would know. know. Right. You know right. the pickups on LA freeways? Right, sure, <laughs> with all the gardening tools and a yeah, shark right. cage in the back right. filled with yeah. weed whackers. <laughs> <laughs> right, so it's good luck. But this way the feds wouldn't go, hey, that guy, that ain't spare tires in the trunk of that car, that's right. moonshine. Because they'd haul up, according to what guys have told me, they'd haul up to 300 gallons of shine in the back of these, either wow. in tanks right. or in individual uh, containers. And then there was the extra space for banjos that they had to put, because <laughs> there always had to be a banjo. Play, be a somebody's got to play a banjo. Yeah, room for a guy playing yeah. a banjo back there. Yeah, deliverance. Huh? Wow, uh, <laughs> can we fire the thing up, Ed? Yeah, yeah. I like the gauges, I like the old, I think you got like a vacuum gauge in there. I, I miss car. <laughs> with vacuum gauges. I never knew what they right. did, but they were like, that. we're gonna gauge the vacuum. I'll, uh, I'll go to the back here. Wow, look at it. I'll tell you what's really cool about this car, is just the way the hood opens and the way the trunk opens. You yeah. know, I don't know how many people passed us coming over here today, but there were a lot of them. This is like a giant handle on a freezer, like a meat locker. Wow. There, this is the, it only has the cheap version of the car. The standard has one tail light. One light, on purpose, not oh, like the other one ones. one tail light. Like, oh, yeah. I didn't even look yeah. at that. And Adam, I always say to people, how much money did Ford right. really save? Well, we're also talking about there's only one door lock on this side, so well, you lock the door and slide over. You get one, one visor. Oh, one visor. All right, well, let me, say, let me tell you this, because <laughs> I was just telling somebody. I said, you know, I used to work at McDonald's uh, and I made $2.90 an hour making minimum wage. And the thing that used to piss me off the most is when you came in the side door, like the employee door, it, you walk right past the time card with the clock and punch, you punch your time card, right? But the policy is you don't walk in punch your time card and then go get into your uniform. You go get into your uniform downstairs, then you come up, then you punch in, and it pissed me off because I was only making $2.90 an hour. They were taking taxes out. And I thought, I used to think to myself, uh, who cares about the 45, 50 seconds it's gonna take me to get into this polyester outfit <laughs> and then come back. And I, you say the same with Ford, but then you realize, I'll bet you that saved McDonald's $2 million a year oh, yeah. back then. Like Nationwide. Just times yeah. a million yeah. employees and a million distributors. Yeah. Hey, and you save you a know, nickel there, save you save it. a nickel That's there. That's what I'm saying I, about Ford. I experienced the same thing. I worked at Colonel Sanders in the back <laughs> cooking fried chicken. And that guy one day told me, he says, hey, you know, the guy that owned the place, he says, hey, next time you don't punch in until after you get your stuff on, yeah. just like you. And I'm, I thought the same thing. It's like, Man, oh man, you know, it's not, this is not the greatest place in the world to work. I mean, the, the floors, I mean, it was a brand new store, and within a week we had to walk like this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, you'd be on your rear. You know? Part of my job was doing the sweep and the mop of said floor at McDonald's. Well, uh, Ed Justice Jr., this has been a uh, treat. We will uh, take a walk around the car and show you all the, all the various uh, cool componentry of it, but. Uh, just, uh, I feel like, uh, one thing I, I love about uh, doing this program is I feel like we bring a bunch of smart guys in and I learn something almost this is an educational program. E every time. Very educational. All right, so, uh, by the way, website, if people want to go check Ju out some JusticeBrothers.com. Justice JusticeBrothers spelled out dot com. That is it. So until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Ed Justice Jr. and Matt DeAndrea saying, keep the air in the spare and the bag in the wheel.